Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Good morning, everybody. RJ, if you can turn, if you can, if you can turn the, uh, my, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Pastor T's, get, Pastor T's getting his Mother's Day squeezes in the middle of the aisle for those of you who are joining us. Uh, but we want to welcome you to New Life Fellowship of Windsor Mill, Maryland. And um, we welcome you for joining us on Facebook, uh, who's joining us on Twitter, who's joining us on YouTube, and the other platforms that we're broadcasting. We welcome you. And um, I, I can tell you now, um, Stephanie Norega was looking at me, I was smiling. Uh, just sitting there smiling and saying, what's that smile on your face? And um, I, I just can't, I just cannot believe who God is, right? He's just, he's just showing up and just from already, just the, the songs we've sung and the prayers we prayed, that's really what, that's what the sermon today. It's kind of eerie how, it's not eerie, it's just the work of the spirit, right? That's what happens today. So we're going to be lifted up in joy and sharing in that joy together. We will, I want to say happy Mother's Day to those mothers out there to those moms, to those grandmoms, to those spiritual moms, um, you know, for those who I see Kathy here today, for those of us who lost their mom, this is my first Mother's Day without my mom, and um, yeah, it's, it, it was a hard one this morning. I thank my wife for being there for me. I think about Melvin. I think about Dave Mitchell. Um, we've lost our we lost our mothers, and so I was talking to my aunt on the first Mother's Day without your mom. Is they, I'm told it's the hardest. One that there is so, uh, but we want to thank you for joining us and being with us and worshiping with us today, um, and sharing in our our joys and sharing in our struggles with us today. For that's what brothers and sisters in Christ are supposed to do. So welcome to New Life Fellowship here in Windsor Mill, Maryland. RJ, if you can change to the next slide, we are a congregation of Grace Communion International. So if you joined us for a new for a while, you probably heard that before. But if you're interested. You know more about us or by Grace Communion, uh, give us a ring, give us an email, send it, give, give us a way of contacting us, and we will share and live the gospel with you. Tony, do you need me? I, I, you're going to have to come. And I can't see what I'm doing here. Is that better? Okay. We, we, I didn't, we didn't get a chance to do the, uh, the mic checks and things this morning because it's Mother's Day. Things run behind schedule. You know how things are on Mother's Day, at least in the Andy's house. So we want to thank you for joining us here at Eli Fellowship and Grace Communion International. So here our mission, and again, I like how Pastor T puts this, is the mission that Jesus, it's the mission of Jesus Christ that he has, he has invited us to participate in with him here at New Life Fellowship. So it's, if you think of it that way, it's, it's our mission, but it's our mission that Jesus Christ has given us. And I love it, it's to know and to love and know Jesus and to know who everyone is in him as the father's adopted children who understand, embrace, enjoy, and freely share this good news with the world in the spirit's multiplying grace 
beginning with the people we're closest to. Yeah, we're close to each other in here today, right? Uh, we're close to our family member. That, that's who we're close to. Yeah, so I see some I see someone smiling at me. Yes, that's who we need to be sharing this gospel with, the ones we're closest to. Uh, our mission, uh, disciple-making strategy, again, given to us uniquely here for the Life Shuttle Fellowship from Jesus himself is to love and worship God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and witness to others about him in loving words and deeds, making disciples who can make disciples. Amen. Um, all right, if we go to the next slide, RJ. Try to keep, RJ's a sprinter, man. I'm, I'm running ahead of him today, right? So. Uh, so for those watching online, it's time to take attendance. So you've been there, done that before with us. If you're new, what we ask you to do is if you're on Facebook, send us the number of adults who are sitting in the room and listening with you in the chat feature. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you can send the chat as well to Pastor Tony, who's there today. Uh, let us know who the number of adults, the number of teens, 13 through 18, and the number of children who are viewing or listening with you today. Uh, we make that announcement now, but you can certainly do that throughout services, and Tony will be collecting that information for us. So on the sixth Sunday of Easter, uh, Resurrection Prayer, um, today what I'd like to do is I want to share a prayer. I prayed this last year. I speak on Mother's Day every year. It's a blessing. Uh, and I was worried about it this year, but I'm good. God, it's all good in Christ. Um, and one of the things I was not expecting uh, and I told my aunt this, uh, my aunt called me on Friday and my aunts that are sort of being reconciled, we just haven't seen them in years and years and years. And she called me on Friday, but we sent her a Mother's Day card. And she said to me, Richie, I've never received a Mother's Day card in my life. And that's the mother, I mean, that's the aunt who was closest to my mother. Her son would have been my age we were supposed to be raised together as brothers. And I found all this out when I was talking to her at the Memorial Day weekend and she was crying and I was driving on the Beltway as we're having this conversation. Um, and it just reminded me of the need to be praying for one another. You just don't know. She's 78 years old this year. And she looks at me as a son because uh, her son would have been Eric, would have been the same age as me. And we were supposed to be raised together. And that was the first Mother's Day card she had ever gotten. And she said she was so moved she had to sit down and cry um, because of all the things that she had been holding on to. Um, and you just don't know, right? We, we've got people in here who've lost uh, mothers who've had traumas in their lives. And sometimes we simply don't know, but the spirit knows. The spirit knows and all we have to do is be obedient to what the spirit tells us to do. We had no idea had no idea that that was going on in her life until she told me. So today what I'd like to do, I wanna pray that prayer, a blessing on moms again today. And so what I'd like to do is this, if you are a child in here and your mother is in this room, I would like you to get closer to her and I want you to hold her hands. I want you to put your arm around her. If you're the husband of a mother in this room, I want you to get close to your wife. I want you to hold her, I want you to honor her. If there's a mother in here that has no one sitting around them, I would like some of you men, some of you people who are sitting here to move closer to them. Because we are unified in Christ, right? There's no over here, there's no, it's no over here, it's us together. So if you are a mom, if you are a grandmom, if you're sitting here by yourself, if I would like you all to move closer to each other today. And, and as a reminder of who Christ, who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are. They never exist alone. They always ex quote, eternally exist together. So I want us to come together. And I want you to put your hand, if you're listening to me now, in your living room, hopefully there's someone there with you. And if there is, move closer to them. If, if they are husbands, move closer to your wife. And it's okay, you can put your arms around them. You can, you can kiss them. You can hold their hand. You can think about how God has blessed you with your wife, with your mom, and, and, and or your grandmother, whatever, whatever that, that person is for you. I'd like you to move closer so we can honor the mothers in our, in our, um, in our, uh, offer, in our uh, to gathering today. So just move together. 
the people we're closest to is the ones we're supposed to love, like Christ love. By this did the world should know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So I love what I'm seeing over here. And if I see Kathy over there, Kathy, I can't get to you. But there's people over there. Please touch Kathy. Put your arms around Kathy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we speak this prayer to you now in gratitude and praise for the gift of mothers. My mother, who I, I don't have anymore, but I have spiritual moms, spiritual grandmothers in this place. Those are my friends and relatives. Those I'll never know. All mothers. Thank you, Lord, for the role they play in the family unit. Thank you for their teachings, their wisdom, their patience and understanding. Thank you for this physical, emotional and spiritual gifts they possess. We pray that you help mothers all across the world to be a blessing upon their children, whether delivering affirmation or discipline. We pray that you help every word and action to be done in love. And we pray that children throughout the world would take time to honor their mothers, that you would show them how to uniquely do so. We pray for those mothers who grieve today. We ask for your comfort to surround those who weep. We pray for the peace of your presence to cover their minds and thoughts. As you remind us, the enemy can never steal us out of your hands. He never has the final say over our lives. We are kept safe in your presence forever, whether in life or in death. We pray for single moms, Lord. Help each of your precious daughters to remember that although they are parenting alone, you have not left them nor forsaken them. We thank you that you see each of them and love them. Lord, if they are weary, we pray and ask that you send them a sister or a brother in Christ to hold them up, Lord. Thank you that you care about every big or small thing that concerns them. Place a hedge of protection around every single mother and her children, Father. We thank you that you alone are their provider. Where there is lack, Father, we pray that it be your will you bring abundance. We pray for those who are still waiting to be a mother. Would you touch them with a special encouragement and strength today? Father, let them know you see their struggle and care about their grief. Give them faith to believe you hear their prayers. Reassure them that you have plans to bless them and give them a hopeful future. We pray for those women who will soon enter motherhood. We pray that you would bless their endeavor with godly wisdom, patience, hope, faith, and so much love for the child they will bear. We pray that you will bless their child rearing, that they would help teach their child to walk and stay on the path of righteousness. Though hard days will come, may you bring comfort to those new mothers and an awareness that though raising, the, 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 though raising ch a child will be tough at times, you will allow them to reap what they sow. And finally, Father, we pray that our mothers act as a blessing beyond their households, reaching into the extended families, communities, churches. I pray that the impact of motherhood is revered throughout society and that these women are acknowledged for their everyday impact on the world. May you guide each of them into fulfilling their purpose here on earth in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, mothers. We love you. We love you. It's okay if you want to kiss your wife, Pastor T. It's great. It's all good. All right. Next line, RJ. <coughs> and so now we have the offering. I'm going to ask Pastor Peter to come on up, and he'll give us the offertory message for today. Oh, uh... Richard, I want to say uh, I, I have a message to the ladies in this sanctuary. Okay, you can share it after services. Uh, no, I want to say it like now because 
I don't want to go to dance late. I know. Let, let, let's finish services and then you can, you can do the lunch. Okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> it is all good. It's hard to follow up that prayer. I know I, my mother's been gone a long time. And I think the hardest thing to, I found shortly after that was uh, thinking about, I think I'll go pick up the phone and talk to her. <laughs> and, and of course she's not there. It takes a while to, to grieve. Well, this morning we're looking at Philippians 2 verses one through eight. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do not do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. <coughs> that is not feeling that we are superior, because we're not. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Not looking for something in return, instead giving so that others also may share in what Jesus has given us by his sacrifice. We give as a mean means so that others may be led to where we are. We give with the interest in the love of others. Verse five, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. So we give because Jesus gave it all. There was no sacrifice that was too great for Jesus as he served others. And that should be the same attitude that we have, the same attitude as well as Jesus. Back in service two had said, and make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit, in person and purpose. <clears throat> Jesus wants all to come to him, and that's what we should want. We should, and when, when we have the same love, we do. Being one in spirit and purpose, we have the same desire that Jesus Christ has, that others, matter of fact, that all would eventually come to him. It is because of their relationship that we give. We give because of our relationship with Jesus so that they, others, may also have the same relationship. Uh, for uh, 2023 financial faith goal reporting, uh, 2023 faith goal is $132,000. What we're given so far is 47181 what we still need is 84,819. And given last service, which is a very good offering, which is $2,939. So in total audio visual given has been $7,571. Audio visual balance is $2,933. So at this time, we are, well, there are ways to give by envelope to check or credit card to NLF PO Box 1417, Owens Mills, Maryland, 21117. Or we can text 
2333 and enter the given amount at that time. Or you can go online and in the up on the upper corner, you see online given in there, you'll find the instructions on how to give. So at this time now, we'll take up the offering. I think it's all over the place. <laughs> A great eternal God, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you so much, Father, for this offering that is in this basket. We know, Father, that Jesus sacrificed, you sacrificed even sending Jesus Christ. And for others may also begin eternal life and have a relationship for you for, uh, forever. We know, Father, that this money now that has gone from our hands is no longer ours as it's given, put it in the basket. It is yours, Father, that we give in trust, we give in faith, and we also know, Father, that you are in charge of this work and that you can touch this, this money that's in this basket, Father, and make it go far more than what small amount that we have given. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beg your pardon if you get cool in here, but I've asked Tori to turn the fan on because I'm going to get hot. <laughs> Before we get too much further into uh, services, I wanted to make an announcement for Sally, Sally Monsango, who's with us. Um, she has a sick uh, aunt in Cameroon and she will be leaving to go to Cameroon uh, this week. Uh, on Friday, she will be leaving. So she's asked for prayers. Um, anything else would you like us to pray about um, her particular circumstances? I just, is there anything else you need, want us to, would like us to pray about, Sally? I just wish to say that I'm leaving. Can, um, Mm. Okay. So Sally's sharing with us, for those of you online, she's, was it her grandmother, her aunt, her great aunt and her niece, her great aunt is sick. Her niece has had a stroke. She found out last night. So she's leaving to go be with them uh, on Friday. So um, please pray for her. Um, we just, we have a lot of that going on in our congregation uh, th this this year. So Sally, we're gonna pray for you. Um, actually, Sally, would you come up? I'm, I'm sorry, those online, that sometimes this is gonna happen, but I like Sally to come up. And um, if you guys would come up with us and Pastor T, can I ask you to ask a prayer on Sally um, right now? So I'm just gonna step in, um, to the front, you won't see me for a few seconds, but we're gonna lay hands on Sally. And we're gonna pray for her and her great aunt and her, her niece. Uh. Heavenly Father, we come before you through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Uh, with gratitude, um, as the sermon of the title displays, we have a reason or hope now, because what you have done in Jesus Christ on our behalf is a human being. So even as we mourn quite a bit more than we have been recently, we just thank you that it's impossible now knowing you to mourn without hope. For you give us the hope of the fact that you have raised our humanity from the dead, taking it as your very own, so that even as we think about Sally right now and her great aunt, 
Um, she is yours. She belongs to you. And more so than that, even, Father, you have taken the name and claimed to her and claimed her humanity so that there really is a real hope for her, not only in the future, but for now. We ask your healing be upon her great aunt. You've shown many times in scripture that you're often willing to heal us even right now as a sign of the eternal and abiding humanity we'll have forever. But until then, Lord, we just pray that you would send the Holy Spirit to each and all of us, including the great aunt and all those who are sick, Kathy, Mitchell, and Dave, and family right now. Send your Holy Spirit as the comforter. Uh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you as the comforter in these situations, as our advocate, the one standing in for us when the grief is strong and almost overpowering. We remember Brother Richard as well, who's lost his mother. But thank you that, that we've lost them in a different way now, but we lost them to you, Lord. They're in your very direct presence. If we could really see, if you give us eyes to see, they're in a much better position and place. And yet, Lord, we do hurt that real relationship that we have with them. It's missing on our side right now. But thank goodness you're on the other side, and they are too before you. So give us all the hope we need right now and continue to sustain us in the reality of Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead. So we love you. We thank you. Give Richard special encouragement now by the Spirit as he speaks about this very thing on what you're able to do with death and things that look dry and, and as if there's no hope. You'll come into it and blow as the Holy Spirit and raise it all up again. We love you and thank you. Supply this hope. Protect your travel, Lord. She's going to be traveling far, far away to Cameroon. Uh, be with her there and bring her back safely, Lord, for us to have fellowship again, praising you for all that you did in your gracious and creative mercy. It's in Christ's name that we pray and thank you for the prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Tim. Thank you for those who came up with us. He who has or she who has ears to hear, let them hear. I mean, I, I can't, you know, stand here before you this morning, and I wasn't even supposed to really be giving the sermon. Um, yes, I was, but it wasn't scheduled. It wasn't on the schedule, and, and I, I didn't even know it until yesterday. But just having walked in here today and listened to the, the songs we sang and the prayers we prayed and knowing what's going on in our midst, Pastor T prayed about the sorrow that many of us are experiencing. <clears throat> the Lord has a word for us. <laughs> the Lord has a word for us on this Mother's Day. I think the most poignant Mother's Day message or commentary, whatever you want to call it, greeting card, the most poignant comment that I know about Mother's Day is found in John 19. So if you can turn into your Bibles and we'll read John 19 verses 25 through 30. On this Mother's Day, I wanna to read to you what happened here at Christ's death. And it says, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So if you can see the scene, Jesus Christ is on the cross and he had already been through all the beatings and the scourgings and the suffering and the name calling and the blood was stripping off of him. And he was beaten beyond recognition. He was made fun of and there he's on the cross and before him, with him at that time was his mother Mary, his aunt Mary and his disciple Mary. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, standing there, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. And after this, when Jesus knew that everything was now finished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there, so they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it up to his mouth. And when Jesus has received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. 
Then bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Now, why do I say that that's probably one of the most poignant Mother's Day messages you could ever hear or ever see? Well, on that cross, at, at death, the, one of the last things that Jesus did was look to his mother and say, and said to her, here is your son. He made provisions for her at his death. Here is your son, son, here is your mother. And of course, for me, this has been resonating in my mind all the time. And for now, my mother is gone and I'm thankful for the provision that the Lord has made for me during all of this time. Yet, yeah, yeah, it's hard, it's hard. That's why we need each other. And those, that's the provision that the Lord makes for us during these times. So on his deathbed, Jesus Christ delivered the best Mother's Day gift he could ever give, that we could ever receive, that we could ever receive. And it's not just for his mother. The finished work of Jesus God has made provisions for us all as well. Did you hear Donna's prayer today? He makes provision for us all, all of humanity for that matter, in that final act on his cross. As the Father, Son, and Spirit is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow, we can look through scripture and find God revealed in this way. We just can see God, he's the same in the Old Testament, he's the same in the New Testament, he's the same today, he's the same tomorrow, he is the unchangeable, unmutable God. And that's who we serve. And that his desires for us have never changed, never changed. And that the completion of his work of reconciliation and provision would be accomplished by his son. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And in the completed work of Jesus, the desire of God for us and for all humanity was made for us. So as we read scripture, today we're going to read Ezekiel. As we read Old Testament scripture, and rather we read New Testament scriptures, we approach the word of God in the same way. We ask, we pray, Father, who art in heaven, praised be your name, Lord God, as I open up your word to see what you have for me today. Hallowed be your name, we approach the scriptures with humility and repentance. Lord God, I don't know everything, though sometimes I think that I do. But Lord, I come before you, though, to repent of wrong thoughts and ideas that I have for you, even in your word, Lord. So I come before you and I repent. I want to know you, singularly pursue you, not what I think I'm proving, but to pursue love and a relationship for you, Lord, would you honor me? Lord, would, would you forgive me for taking any other approach to you, Lord, as I read your word? And then we come with expectation and revelation. Lord, I look forward to your continued revelation by the Spirit. Not the research that I can do and I can garner from intellectual exercise but by spirit, relation, spirit revelation, Lord, that you reveal who you are to me. Not something that I'm trying to prove, but a simple pursuit of the discovery of who God is and how he's been revealed. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And who is the God that Jesus reveals to me and you? <laughs> that's the building block of what all this is. And so we come with him expecting him to reveal himself to us, getting rid of all expectations we may bring to the table. And then we come listening. So I listen to you, Lord, undistracted and undisturbed because we're pursuing a relationship with the lover of our lives, 
You know how it was when you were pursuing the lover of your life. I'm looking at my sister-in-law, Trish, here. I still have a memory, a memory of her. I hope you don't mind. But when she was in college, Alexi would call her. We'd be at the house. She'd get in the closet, right? The cord is going all the way through here. And she'd get in that closet, right? But you know how it was. They call you. You got to get someplace comfortable. You don't want to be disturbed because you want to hear those sweet nothings. You want to hear how much she loves you. And you want she wants to hear about how much I love you. And when am I, are you going to see me again? I can't wait to. You know, what? most of you who've been married, you know the story. You know the exercise. But do we give God, Father, Son, and Spirit that same respect? Do we get someplace where we can truly listen to him tell us Child, I love you. Or are we distracted? Are we disturbed? Maybe because we're in the wrong place. Maybe we do have to go to a closet. <laughs> Maybe we do have to go outside on a deck. Maybe we do have to get up at four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning because there's just simply too many people in your house. So maybe you do have to get up, right? So you can give him the due respect of listening to what he has to say, undisturbed and undistracted. And then we approach the word with a believing heart. Lord, give me, give us a believing heart. Help me to believe what you're saying here, Lord. Help me to hear as I'm listening and then help me to believe what your word has to say. Help me to believe it. So that if I believe it, then I can live it, Lord. So Lord, I repent for not listening. Lord, I repent for not believing. So Lord, please, Spirit, help my unbelief. So yes, even though we're in the Old Testament today, God still speaks to us. So as we continue through the Gospel Project, and apologies to those who were at the Bible study who may have gone through this, um, we're going to go through it again. <laughs> and, right, so apologies, but not really, because the, the Spirit has some things to say to us today. He wants us to have hope. He wants us to have a living hope, despite all the stuff, all the things that I know are going on in this room, and that I know that's going on online in those households, in those relationships, the suffering, the death. I know what's going on. So I want to speak this, a message of hope to you today. But even though we read the Old Testament, we keep asking ourselves, who is God? Who is God? And what is his word for me and you today? Yes, even in Ezekiel 37, when we're talking about dry bones. It's not just a historical record of God dealing with the children of Israel. It is the living word of God dealing with me and you and the ones he loves today. So that he or she who has an ear, let them listen, is what the God's word says to us today. We don't read God's Bible as a historical book. We read it as the living word, the revealed word, and the way in which we engage in a relationship with Christ himself. And when we do, we can believe that in Ezekiel, as we read it today, God promised one day, one day to make provisions for all people by giving life to his people, by restoring his people, and prove, by providing a king who would dwell with them. So if you are in a spot, in a place that needs a living hope, if you're in a place that you need a word of encouragement, we can find that in Ezekiel 37. So let's pray once again before we get into the sermon. Loving Father, we're so thankful that we can call you loving and that we can call you Father on this Mother's Day. Lord, we know that mothers and fathers are made in your image, complete, both, both male and female. And so, Lord, we're so thankful that 
you are worthy of all of our praise and you are worthy of all of our honor and our glory today, Lord. We bless your name as we sing about it. We give you praise, Lord. We know that you love us, or sometimes we know that you love us. And Lord, forgive us for those times when we don't always remember. But we come before you today, Lord, expecting to hear your word revealed, to hear you speak to us in, a, in an encouraging way today. Lord, would you just open up our hearts to receive what you have for us. Open up our ears, Lord, so that we can hear. And open up our eyes, Lord, so we can see. And then open up our actions, Lord, so that we can live and move out of the love you've given us in your son, Jesus. And that we can move and live accordingly. That we can, we can uplift those who are mourning, Lord. That we can give words of encouragement, Lord, for those who need words of encouragement, Lord. That we, that we can lift up. Lord, with Jesus, those who need to be lifted up today and tomorrow and for always. And so, Lord, we just commit this service now into your hands. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. So in Ezekiel 37, at this point in history, uh, as we've been rehearsing over and over again, at this point, the kingdom of Israel, there were two. There was the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And at this point, they had gone into captivity. And so if you read Judges, Kings, you read all these books before we get to this point, God would give a word from his prophet. They would heed his word for a little bit. They would forget his word and they would go the other way. And this cycle kept, kept going on over and over and over and over again. That just shows how patient God is. And he kept warning them that this was something was going to happen. And it's like us, right? In our history, we are learning some things over and over and over again and over again. And he says, turn in my word. Look what I said to Judah. Look what I said to Israel. And so at this point, they were taken into captivity. But God never stopped being their God. Yes, they were being punished. Yes, they were in captivity. Yes, sometimes we hurt. Yes, sometimes we feel we don't hear God's word, but God never stops being your God. God never stops loving you, just like he never stopped loving the children of Israel. And so God gave Ezekiel a prophet. He gave him a vision of the power of God to bring life out of death and to restore a broken, scattered people. Ezekiel's vision was fulfilled ultimately, ultimately in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Did you hear Donna's prayer? I, we didn't, I had no idea Donna was going to pray that. Donna had no idea I was going to say this. We had no idea we were going to sing this today. So I just think it's a word God wants us to hear. God is with us. God is with us. The king who gives life and rules over a unified people from every nation, tribe, people, and language, as it says in Revelation 7, verse 9. This is who our God is. And so the first thing I want to say to you today as we read Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 6, so you can turn there. The first thing I want to encourage you with is that God gives life to a people who are dead. God gives life. To a people who are dead. Let's read verse one. Let me pick this mic's home below the speakers here. Verse one The hand of the Lord was on me. This is Ezekiel speaking. And he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. So if your imagination is good, you can imagine yourself on top looking down in this valley and seeing all these white, dry bones. Enough bones to make an army. And if you grew up in the church, and not the church, you grew up in WCG, you probably have the, uh, the Wolverton uh, pictorial in your mind when you see that. I do. Right? All these bones scattered out, all these thousands of bones. And he led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very, very dry. Verse 3, then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So this is God asking Ezekiel, can these bones live? And he replied, Lord, God, only you know. 
Verse 4, he said to me, prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you and cover your skin. I will put breath in you so that you can come to life. Then you will know that I am Lord. I am Lord. The bones literally litter the valley representing the whole nation of Israel. And they were dead. The people of Israel were considered, considered themselves beyond resuscitation as a nation. As we said, for too long they had ignored God. That had rejected him. And as time passed, their hearts became hardened. The people's rebellion ultimately led to God's punishing them by means of exile. So in short, their disregard for God's word, as preached by the prophets, led to their death as a nation. So I have a question for you today, church. As we read this scripture today, how many dry bones do you have in your lives today? What are those places and spaces that have become hardened by time? Those, those places and spaces that have become hardened by unbelief or those places and spaces that have become hardened by pain or by fatigue or Lord, I can't take this anymore. Where are the dry bones in your life? And I declare to you today that if you recognize those areas of dryness in your life, then we must recognize the power of God's word to bring life, to bring life. Too often our habit is when we get in those places of dryness, yeah, sometimes we'll cry out to the Lord, but then the pain and the, the fatigue and all these other things turn off our hearing sometimes, turn off, turn off our vision sometimes. We turn to other things, what people say to us, right? What people say to us, we turn to them, or oh, it must be this, or it must be that. Advice that people give you, you know, good nature, but we're turned away from God and what he has to say. And he says, my words bring life to your dry places. What are your dry places today? And what do you need God's word to liven you today? As we read scriptures, I want you to think about that. God speaks to us today. Where are your struggles? God's words brings life to your struggles. Where is your pain? God's words bring in and life to your ability to deal with that pain. Where are your periods or places of dryness? God's word has the power to bring restoration to all aspects of our lives. Whew. Death. Death sting. We're feeling death sting. Sickness. Hospital stays, and I know what it's like. I know Kathy, our sister's going through it now. I know what it was like with my wife and, and my mom. I know what it's like. I know you know what it's like. Challenges in your lives with your sons and your daughters. I know you know what it's like. I know you know what it's like. Provision, Lord, where is that going to come from? I know what it's like. More importantly, Jesus knows what it's like. Again, as, as Donna prayed, Jesus learned their obedience through the things he suffered. So we're not suffering on our own. He, his word, can bring life. In our weaker moments, may, we may doubt God's power. Lord, we've been praying about this for a long time. Lord, where are you? You said that I'm your daughter or you said that I'm your son, but it's like you don't hear me, Lord. We may doubt God's power to make a situation or a relationship whole 
again. We may question whether God could change a loved one's heart and heart. We may question it. That loved one of ours has been feeling this way and has been acting this way towards God and has a hard heart ever since I've known that person. And we may question God's providence in that person's life. But we would be wrong in our doubt because a God who can raise dry bones to life can restore marriages. A God who raises dry bones to life can heal diseases. It can save, it can save the worst of sinners. What do you think is the worst type of a sinner? And I say to you today, God can save the worst of our sins. God's words bring life to us. And as they bring life to us, they bring hope to us. If we believe God's word and we pray for belief and we ask God to help our unbelief when we really can't believe it and because we haven't seen it, God is faithful and true to help your unbelieving heart. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? The second thing I want to say to you is God restores a people who are scattered and divided, who are scattered and divided. Man. If you look at our lives, there's a lot of scatteredness going on. There's a lot of division going on in our lives. There was a lot of division going back then. Listen, church, there's nothing new under the sun. Isn't that scriptural as well? There's nothing new, right? The things that we're going through, all the things that I described to you, this is what was going on back then. Right? And this is what God did, and this is what God said back then. God restores people who are scattered and divided. So let's read verse 16 through 17, and then we're going to read verse 20 through 22. He says, Son of man, take a single stick and write on it, belonging to Judah and the Israelites, and so did with him. Then take another stick and write on it, belonging to Joseph the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with them. So we know that the kingdom of Israel was split. And God said, take a stick and write the name of one of them on this stick. And then take the second stick and write the name of the second nation on that stick. Then in verse 17, he says, then join them together into a single stick so they become one in your hands. So take the division Put them together, and they are going to become one in your hand. Verse 20, when the sticks you have, I'm sorry, when the sticks you have written on are in your hand and in full view of the people. So Ezekiel, hold it up so that the people can see. Tell them, this is what the Lord God says. So God always says, tell them, this is what I am saying. This is what God is saying to you. He says, I'm going to take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I'm going to take them out of bondage. I'm going to take them out of uh, being scattered. And I will gather them from around all, I will gather them from all around and bring them into their own land. And in verse 22, I will make them one nation in the land. God says, I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. And one king will rule over all of them. They will no longer be two nations. It will no longer be divided into two kingdoms. So Ezekiel was commanded by God to perform this act as a representation of the southern kingdom and the northern kingdoms. Joining the sticks together, God, he, God revealed his plan to reunify the two kingdoms. So again, we're talking about a people now who have been scattered. Who, who, who have been taken away. They've been, they've been captured and they've been taken out of their land. And all they remember probably at this point is, oh, what was us? All those things we had, what could have been, this is never going to happen again. But God never stopped being their God. He never stopped reminding them of who he is and what he will do for them. So he said, take it before the people and show them, I am going to do this. The Lord, the Lord longed to see the tribes reconciled under one king. So his vision for
for the children of Israel never faltered, despite all the things that they continuous, continuously did against what God's words were. A reality that would come to pass in his timing and his doing. So establishing unity between the kingdoms seemed unrealistic. So what disunity do you see today that seems unrealistic, right? That can never happen, right? What seems unrealistic? But Ezekiel knew that a peaceful reunion between the North and the South would require an act of God. It would require an act of God. So what's the word for us today in God's unification work in bringing things together? What's the word for us today? Well, I'm talking to the citizens of heaven, as it says in Philippians 3, verse 20. So I got to get us straight first, right? Because sometimes when we think of these divisions today, we forget who we are. We forget who we are. So church, citizens of heaven, where Christ lives, that's who we are. That's who we are, citizens of heaven. And I hope you know why I'm emphasizing that. Because so many of us are getting caught up in the divisions of this world. Too many of us are frustrated by the divisions of this world. Too many of us are getting caught up in the politics of what's going on these days. And we forget who we are and our actions belie our citizenships, our words belie who we really are, and certainly then our actions that follow our thoughts and our words certainly don't, that they do that too. We, it doesn't, that people look at us and they don't know that we're citizens of heaven, that, that that's really where our citizenship is. Like we really should be taking sides on things. How much of it is occupying your minds and controlling your thoughts and words and actions that betrays your true citizenship. Do you know who you are, church? Do I know who I am? Healing divides uniting people, and uniting people is the purview of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is not ours. It is not ours. It's not for us to do. God told the children of Israel, by me, this is what I am going to do. And Ezekiel was reminding them, this is the word of God. What is the word of God saying to us in this same time of division and struggle? Ours is to fall on our knees. So are we falling on our knees in light of all the things that are going on in the divisions and struggles and disunity that's going on now? Are we falling on our knees and crying out to the Lord, help? Is that our cry? We need you, Lord. Heal our lands. Heal our people. Heal me, Lord. Heal our hearts and turn them to you. Is that our prayers? When we see and when we hear all that's going on in our lands and, and, and frankly, the whole world, what is our response to that? Are we crying out to the Lord, help? Because this is not something that is our responsibility. What we see going on, we know that that is under the purview of the Lord, of the King, of kings. So are we crying out when we're stuck in the middle of divisions? Or are we getting occupied in the discussions, quote, unquote, or the arguments, quote, unquote? Are we trying to prove points, quote, unquote? Is somebody wrong and I'm right? Or as citizens of heaven, are we turning to the living God and saying, Lord, help. Help us. We pray to you, Lord. All, the only hope we have in this world is in your son, Jesus, Lord. That's the only hope we have for death. The only hope we have for unity and healing is Jesus. Lord, help. We turn to you. We cry out to you. We say help. 
And then the next thing I want to say to you is that God dwells with a people who are in rebellion. Like I said, nothing can separate us from God. God is there. Rather we're acting right or rather we're acting wrong. <laughs> He's there, right? God is in your quiet. God is in your loud. God is in your mess. God is in your cleanup. He's there. So if you don't know, if you think you're hiding from him, <laughs> uh, you're not. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fallacy we got to kind of get over. God is there. It isn't that good because we know if we're in our mess, God is going to be there. He's going to deliver. That, that's where he's got to go to deliver us. He's got to go get us from the mess. He's got, he's got to clean us up from the meth, mess. So Ezekiel 37, verse 23. Ezekiel 37, verse 23. It says, there, they will not defile themselves anymore with idols. Their abhorrent things and all their transgressions. I will save them from their apostasies by which they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So God's got to go in and dwell with us so that he can cleanse us. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them, and there will be one shepherd of all of them. They will follow my ordinances and keep my statutes and obey them. They will live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your ancestors lived. So now he's talking about they will inherit the promises that God made to them. They will live in it forever with their children and grandchildren, and my servant David will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be a permanent covenant with them. I will establish and multiply them and will set my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place, place will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. God will be our God, and we will be his people. When my sanctuary, God says, is among them forever, the nations you know, the nations will know that I, the Lord, they will know I, the Lord, will sanctify Israel. So church, have hope. Have hope. God will cleanse us and our circumstances. So we can pray in hope. Whatever our circumstances are, whatever it may be, wherever those dry spots are, we pray in hope that God will cleanse us and our circumstances. We can have hope. God calls us his God calls us his. We are his people, and he is our God. Do you understand how important identity is to us? God is our God. So that's why I talked about how we approach scriptures. What does God say we are? Who does he say we are? What does God say we have? What does God say we can do? What does God say we can speak? Well, God says you can be patient, right? So then God says you can speak from patience. It's not about who you are, but that's just how I am. You can have what God says you can have. You can do what God says you can do as his children. You can say what God tells you to say, and you can be who God has called you to be. God has called us his. We are his people, and he is our God. Church, have hope. We have a king and a shepherd, Jesus, who rules with grace and mercy and provides for all of our needs. Where do you need God's grace? Where do you need God's mercy? Where are you trying to run from God? God says, I have grace and mercy for you, child. That's what I have for you. And if you have the need for provision, God says, I got it. I am the great shepherd. I hear you when you pray to me. I know what you need. Believe me. Have faith. Have hope. Have hope. The scriptures give us hope. They give us hope. We read with who God is in his scripture. In the Old Covenant and the New Testament, we see God being who God is. We should have hope when Jesus fed the 5,000 with uh, loaves and a, and a little fish. We can have hope. 
that, that, that God, when he, when the prophet uh, went into the, the widow's house in the Old Testament, and all she had was a little thing of oil and one thing of flour to make one cake. And yes, she still served the Lord. But we can have hope because we saw what God did. We can have hope. We can have joy because of who we are. We have a hope in a Jesus who is king of kings and the great shepherd and provides for all of our needs. We can have hope. So have hope, church. We have a peace. We have a peace in Jesus that he establishes. It will be permanent as well. We don't have to worry about a peace tomorrow and then not having it tomorrow if it's the peace of Jesus. There's no, there's no uh, discouragement in that. If we receive the peace of Jesus, you'll have it today and you'll have it tomorrow. You can have his peace and it's permanent. Have hope. God's dwelling place is with us. God's dwelling place is with us. God is here. God is here. His spirit is within us. God is here. That's why God's with you in your mess. That's why God is with you in your discouragement. That's about why God is with you when you don't have peace. God, that's why he's there when he has when you don't have peace. He is here. And as the song says, God is here. Let the broken hearted rejoice. Who's had some broken heartedness lately? Who has had their heart broken lately? The scriptures say in the song says, rejoice. Let the broken hearted rejoice because God is here. God is here. Let the sick say, I am well. You guys hear the song. I know you do. God is here if you're sick. Let the sick say, I am well. Why? Because God is here. God is here. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, you know it. I had to listen to that song today, this morning. God is here. So if I want to give you some encouragement today, it is God is here. Because God is here, we have a hope. And that's the message that God was telling to the children of Israel who were all over the place, who weren't living in the way God had called them to be. They weren't being the people God had called them to be. They weren't doing the things God had called them to do. They weren't worshiping the way God asked them to. They were not his people, but he was always their God. And he had to remind them, you are my people and I'm your God. So wherever you are, know that God is here. And because God is here, we can have hope. We can have hope. Now, church, it's not easy. It's not easy. We have sisters in here today that were crying out of pain and suffering. And you know what? Jesus says to each one of us, you go and remind them of the hope they have in me. You go. Not, not just the pastor. But you go and say, God is here. Let the weak say, I am well. God is here. Let the brokenhearted rejoice. Because sometimes when you're there, you can't do that if you're brokenhearted. So you need God's faithful servants. And he sends us. That's not that Jesus. Listen, I, we're going to, I'm going to say this out loud. We're going to end up posting. My wife and I are going to host the chosen viewing here in church one of these days. I highly recommend that because I think it does a great job of portraying the Jesus that I read in the scriptures. Um, and the one thing that I could just, just the, the arguing disciples, the things that are constantly go on, God was always there in his infinite patience. And he refused to do what he was doing without them though. He refused to be God without them, despite their flaws. And I'm just vision, I'm envisioning all the art, all this stuff. And he just loved them to tell them, I've got bigger things for you to focus on and do. So just walk with me. Walk, look at me, is what he said to some of them. And others, he said, come with me. Follow me. And that's what God is saying to us. Look at me. 
right? Look at me, not, not at your circumstances. Look at me. Come to me and follow me, right? That's what he's calling us to do, and that's where our hope lies. And so we can look back at Jesus' crucifixion, and you can look at the provision he provided for his mother and said, mother, here is your son. And then, son, here is your mother. And know that in his biggest anguish in his life, he still, his thoughts were still on humanity. Is, isn't that, it, yes, thank you. Doesn't that kind of blow your mind, church? Is it just me? I'm sweating up here like crazy. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's, it's, when you, it's, it's unspeakable joy. And, I, and, I, and so I just have so much hope in watching how Jesus, in his humanity, dealt with us. And how he just says, oh, no, I'm not doing this without you, Trish. No, I'm just not going to do it without you, Ethel, Carl. No. That, and, and that's wonderful, right? That's just wonderful. That's who God is. And he's here. And because God is here, we can have hope. We can have that hope. And I can't tell you how helpful that has been for me to have someone speak that over me. Thank you, Pastor T. Thank you, Vanita, who was speaking that over me. Because at times when you're driving and, and you're walking and you're talking and you're thinking and your mind is all over the place, you need Jesus. And Jesus typically says, Clarice, go, go see your son today. Go, go tell him you love him. Randy, go, go, go talk to Richard. Just give him a hug. Carl, you know, make him happy by listening to your music come through the parking lot today, right? You know, Stephanie, go rouse with Richard. Go, go, you know, go check in with him. Just make, make him smile. Just whatever, right? But that's God, that's God in motion. That's God, and that's how he lives. That's how he loves. And so we need to be reminded of the hope we have in him. Because that Mission statement is serious. Our disciple making strategy is serious. That is our job description. With Christ, we do this. So, how seriously do we take the calling of God on our lives, where we're at, on our jobs, uh, in school, uh, wherever we are, in the neighborhood? Somebody blew the horn at Pastor T today, so he's doing something in the neighborhood just to say hi. Well, where are you? with Jesus today. Ezekiel 37 conveys a message of hope that God extends mercy to the undeserving. How many of us in here deserve good things from God? How many of us deserve a good life? Nobody? Nobody's raising their hand? God extends mercy to the undeserving. I ask it another way. Is there anybody in here who does not sin? <coughs> don't raise your hand. I don't know if I want to know. If, if somebody thinks they don't sin, I don't want to know. And if you don't, if you don't sin, if <coughs> sorry, if you don't sin, see Pastor T. Um, he did it for the Israelites living in Babylon, extending mercy, and he's still doing it to for us and to us today. Romans 5, 8 says, God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Excuse me. Think about that for a second. The dry bones in Ezekiel's vision were without hope. And then able to save themselves. Sinful humanity finds itself in the same position. This world is just like those dry bones. It finds itself in that same uh, position. Fortunately, God has taken the initiative to engage people who are dead in their sin and offer them life through the one king, Emmanuel, God with us. The initiative he has taken, and the people he has engaged now is you and me. <laughs> That's us. He's engaged us. We were dead in our sins, and he's offered us life 
through God, Emmanuel, God with us. And one day Jesus will rule over a unified people. One day he will make rule over everyone made up of every nation, every tribe, every people in every language. Looks like the mic microphone. Something always happens to me up here, these microphones. But I can't, I'm coming to the hour, oh, I came to the end. Thank you. RJ, this is a tricky plan on me. It's not a tricky plan on me. So fortunately, God has taken the initiative as a remind, as a concluding reminder, church, me and you. He's engaged people who were dead in their sin and offer them life through the one king. Did you know that God has offered you life? Do you know that God has offered you life, Jonathan? Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ life. Jesus by the spirit. Well said. Did you know, church, that God has offered you life with God with us? And one day, and we can hope and we look forward to this one day when Jesus will unify everyone, just like he unified Israel symbolically in, in Ezekiel 37, and he will rule over every nation and every tribe and every people in every land. I got another song coming. You guys hear it, right? It is. <laughs> but that's our, that's our God. That's our Jesus. That's the Father. That's the Holy Spirit. So we just learn to walk with the Spirit and know that God is with us and with God being with us, the hope is alive. No matter how long the trial is, hope is alive. And we walk with each other. We just walk with each other. God calls us to walk with each other. The world will know that you are my disciples if you have one love for one another. So we worship the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we love our neighbors, our brothers and sisters as ourselves. Because when we love God, when we listen to God, and we believe God, and we say God is here, the beautiful thing is God just says, okay, well, go. <laughs> it's, it's always, it's that what I call the boomerang effect, right? You can't just love God, right? Because God's gonna say, okay, but well now if you love me, then you're gonna really love these people. So we love with a living hope. We live with a living hope. We have peace with a living hope. We, we praise with a living hope. We pray with a living hope because we know who God is. So let's continue as we continue to read scripture, whether it's Old Testament, whether it's New Testament, whether it's the Psalms. Let's see where, what this God is all about. Let's seek him out because we want to have a relationship with him. Let's hear him. Let's give him our time so that we can hear him. He can know him and he can tell us, I love you, God. I love you. I know what you're going through. I do. I do. Have you ever talked to my son, Jesus? He knows. Hear him. Talk to him. He loves you. He loves all of us. right? So we can, we can pray that way. We can have joy that way. We can rejoice that way. We can walk that way. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So if we can come to the table now, we'll come and take communion together in community. We'll take the bread and the wine together, and we're just simply going to, we're going to thank God for the Father, the Son. We believe in God the Father. Another song, we believe in Christ the Son. <laughs> we can believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one, right? <laughs> Man, we, we could really have sung this sermon today. Really, we could have really done that. So I just would like to say, um, I'm pretty sure my mother would have been proud of me, but well, she was proud of me anyway. But I knew I had to come up here and preach this sermon despite what's going on, knowing that she loves me. And she says, as she would say, do your thing, Richard. Um, <laughs> and so I thank her for her love for me all these years and 
Um, you know, I just give her, I thank God for her. We celebrate, hopefully you guys could go home, continue to celebrate your mothers. Um, but again, as Donna prayed, he's not only the creator of mothers, he's the creator of fathers too. He gives us all of that in the one person, Jesus Christ. So let's say the Nicene Creed together. What a beautiful name it is. Oh man, I feel like singing right now. <laughs> I really do. When are you gonna get this, this sound system working so we can just break out in spontaneous uh, cheer, singing? Um, because I mean, we could have li literally sang our, our, one of these days we're gonna do that. We're gonna sing the sermon. We are. Um, I have to come up with some ideas, maybe Pastor T or Pastor Tony. We're going to sing a sermon one of these days. It's going to be fun. So let's take uh, let's take up our, the elements and let's read the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and our, our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary who was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead in his kingdom, but have no end. Hallelujah. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father through the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for a living hope. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we'd like to say goodbye to our friends and family on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Revelation 1 verses 5 through 6 says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Be at peace.